everyone. In today's lecture, we'll see armature reaction in a DC machine in details. Let's look into it. We already know the construction of a DC machine. For the time being, I'm taking two pole machine. Armature, it is having conductors. Now, main field flux, if I take, it flows from north to south. Main field flux is there. Phi m, corresponding MMF, I can say, FM. FM is a main field MMF. So that is in, in this direction, north to south. So if I take the same vector, so these are main field MMF vector. So what if I consider this machine as a generator? We know as it is a generator, we should give the rotation and it gives the electrical output. So we are rotating the generator in this direction, in clockwise direction. So if you apply Fleming's right hand rule to find the current direction in these conductors, so Fleming's right hand rule I'm applying for generator to find the EMF induced. So flux direction, this is the flux direction. Direction of force is upwards onto this conductor, upwards. So here, current is going inwards. If I take the same, this conductor, flux is this way, but force acting is downwards. So current in these conductors is dot and current in these conductors is cross. So let's mention the same. So by applying Fleming's right hand rule, we have given the directions of these conductors, current directions. Now what if I consider the same machine as a motor? In case of motor, we give current and we get the mechanical output. So if I give the current of this cross and here dot, so I am giving current in this fashion. So in that case what will happen? If you apply Fleming's right hand, left hand rule, sorry, because I am considering this machine as a motor and I am trying to find the direction of rotation. So I'll apply Fleming's left hand rule. So how do you remember Fleming's left hand rule is for motor, Fleming's right hand rule is for generator? We already said in one of the class, Fleming's right hand rule, Fleming's left hand rule. We know one rule is for motor, another rule is for generator. But we quite often forget but we quite often forget which rule is for what. So one of the tip to remember this is in Fleming's left hand rule we have one R, in motor we have one R. So Fleming's left hand rule, motor. Fleming's right hand rule we have two R, two R. So Fleming's right hand rule is for generator. Anyways, so if I consider this as a motor, direction of rotation of these for these conductors for these current directions is downwards. So here onto this conductor force will be upwards. So the direction of rotation will be in this direction. This is in case of motor. So for the same cross and dot, if I consider this machine as a generator, then direction of rotation will be clockwise. If I consider the same machine as a motor, then direction of rotation of the rotor is counterclockwise. So now, if you notice, every current carrying conductor has a magnetic flux around it. So my conductors, armature conductors also now carrying current. So there is a flux around these conductors. So how do you find the direction of flux over here? Because of the armature current. By using right hand thumb rule. So current is going inwards into this conductor. So flux is this way. Here, like this. Here, current is coming outwards. So right hand thumb rule, so flux is this way here. So if you see, this portion of 
conductors are having current is inwards so flux is this way and this side current is outwards flux is this way so whatsoever is a current direction armature flux is now downwards let's represent the same here armature flux is downwards so i can say corresponding mmf armature mmf is downwards let's look both main field flux and armature flux this is our main field flux and here it is armature flux and this is a main field flux main field mmf direction and this is armature mmf direction so if i combine these two let's put them together so a resultant mmf if you draw this will be the resultant mmf right now we have two mmfs present in the machine one is main field mmf which we are giving which is required for us another one is armature mmf if you see main field mmf is in this direction armature mmf is perpendicular to the main field mmf which means armature mmf has a cross magnetizing effect on to the main field mmf let me repeat the statement armature mmf is cross magnetizing the main field mmf so let me define now armature reaction armature reaction is nothing but how armature flux is affecting the main field flux we can see that from these two main field flux is in this direction armature flux is downwards so how this armature flux is affecting the main field flux is it demagnetizing the main field flux no it is not demagnetizing it because my armature flux is not opposite to main flux so there is no demagnetization my armature flux not either supporting the main field flux so there is no magnetizing effect also so what kind of effect is this this is cross magnetizing effect because main field flux is this way armature flux is downwards so it is cross magnetizing effect i am again emphasizing the statement here armature flux cross magnetizes the main field flux people say it also demagnetizes but right now i am not saying it is demagnetizing it is only cross magnetizing i will explain the statement and i'll explain how demagnetizing effect occurs we'll see in shortly let's see for different values of current if armature conductors are not carrying any current fa is zero only fm is present what if armature conductors are carrying little less current if armature conductors are carrying little less current fa is very less armature mmf is very less so cross magnetizing effect of this armature flux onto the main field flux is very less what if armature conductors are carrying more current if they are carrying more current then it cross magnetizes even more let's see just a simple structure i am just taking the poles i am not considering yoke and all other things i am just considering the simplest structure we'll call this axis as we have poles along this line so we'll call this as polar axis as poles are present we'll call it as polar axis or polar axis is also called as d axis that is direct axis and this axis which is perpendicular to d axis is called quadrature axis 
or Q axis. At the same time, you can call it as interpolar axis. This is poles are present here, so we call it as polar axis. There is no poles here, so we'll call it as interpolar axis. Between these two, this axis is called as interpolar axis. If you notice, this point is a middle for these two poles. Middle point, physically, it is a middle point of these two poles. So we can call this axis also called as GNA, geometric neutral axis. Geometrically, physically, there is a middle point of these two poles. So I hope these axes are very clear because these will use a lot in all other missions. In AC missions, we look at D axis. In future, in advanced machine drives also, we look at this D axis, Q axis very extensively. Now for easy analysis, I wish to cut this machine in the middle and I'll try to keep in the straight fashion. So what I'll do is, I'll cut it, I'll separate these two here. So the same round machine we have taken in linear way. Everything is same. Polar axis, pole axis or polar axis or D axis and this is geometric neutral axis or interpolar axis or Q axis. Let's see now flux distribution and the air gap because of the main field flux. North pole flux is coming out of the pole and south pole will go into the pole. So flux direction here is downwards, here it is upwards. And in this gap, how the flux will be? Flux lines will be, as we seen, pole shoe is to spread the flux. So it is like this. So likewise here also. Let's draw now main field flux. From this portion to this portion, we have a constant air gap. From this point to this point, air gap is constant. So what we'll have is, we'll have constant flux. As air gap is constant, flux is also constant. In this region, flux is coming down to zero in this fashion. Because as length is increasing, reluctance is more, as reluctance is more, flux is getting reduced. So here, as flux is zero, which means the effect of south pole onto this point is exactly equal to the effect of north pole. So both these two poles are having equal effect onto this point. So a resultant flux is zero. Resultant MMF is zero. So we'll call this axis as magnetic neutral axis. If you notice, GNA and MNA are in the same axis. Let's see whether it is true even after we consider this armature flux. Because so far we have seen only main field flux, we have not considered this armature flux. We have seen in other lectures, if you consider all these conductors are cross and this side conductors are dot, the MMF shape is triangular. We have seen that in other lectures, we have given the link in description you can check it out. So this is the armature MMF, FA. This is the main field flux, phi M. Sorry, it's not clear, FA. So one point here to be noted is, Armature MMF shape is 
triangular and maximum along Q axis. Or to be specific, maximum along the brush axis. And the shape of main field flux is trapezoidal. As you see, it's, it's like trapezoid. Now if you notice the armature flux, this is the armature flux shape. This shape is saddle shape. It is called as saddle shape. Why the shape is of this nature? As we know, between these two points, we have a constant air gap. As constant air gap is there, flux is equal to MMF by reluctance. So reluctance is also constant. F, this slope, by some constant, it will just change the slope. So slope has changed, but it is of same shape, just change in slope. And if you notice here, flux, even the MMF is increasing, flux value is reducing. Because here, air gap is increasing. As air gap is increasing, MMF is increasing, air gap is also increasing, so reluctance will also increase. So resultant way, armature flux is reducing. Because increasing MMF is less compared to increasing reluctance. That's why the shape has come down. Again, North Pole region, it is going up. Again, constant. So, of this nature. Let's now take just armature flux and main field flux. Some of these two will give us resultant flux. Here, half of this pole region is having a subtraction effect and other half of this region is having a addition effect. Similarly, this region is having a subtraction, this region is having a addition effect. So it seems subtraction effect is exactly equal to the addition effect. Hence, there is no resultant change in average flux. Hence, I said, armature reaction only causes cross magnetizing effect. But if you see, it is not exactly true. Addition effect is always less than the subtraction effect. The reason is because of the saturation of the pole tip. If you see the resultant flux, this will be the resultant flux. And here, as flux is more, it gets saturated. This pole tip gets saturated. So amount of subtraction is not exactly equal to the amount of addition. To summarize this, armature reaction causes only cross magnetizing effect. Due to this cross magnetizing effect and due to the saturation of the pole tip, there will be a demagnetization effect. I hope this point is clear. If you're not clear, again, because you already have the convention of following some angle change and all, you know, two theta e everything. So how that demagnetization effect comes, that also we'll see. So there, you'll understand everything more clearly. Just wait for a short while. We'll get to it shortly. Because this is a normal, you know, normally people get confused at this point only. Though it seems you are getting even more confused, but don't worry, it will get more clear very soon. Okay. Now, if we observe the resultant flux only, this is the resultant flux. So, the resultant flux due to armature reaction 
in the air gap is of this shape and the shape is called as PQ wave. We have seen different wave shapes. Main field flux distribution in the air gap is of trapezoidal shape. Armature MMF is triangular and maximum along the brush axis and the flux, armature flux is of shadow shape. The resultant flux that is phi m plus phi a is PQ wave. Let's concentrate now onto this PQ wave, resultant flux. Now why the shape has changed to this PQ wave? Because of the armature flux. Agar armature flux nahi hai, so we would have, we would be having only phi m. That is of trapezoidal shape. Anyways, if you observe this PQ wave, MNA is now shifted to this point. And of course, my JNA will not change because it is a geometric mean, geometric middle. As long as physical dimensions of the machine is not changed, this geometrical middle axis or neutral axis will not change. GN is always fixed. But MNA, which is magnetically neutral, means where the flux is zero. Previously it was here, but now it is shifted to this point. So here, normally questions used to come, in which direction MNA gets shifted? You cannot say towards the right it gets shifted. You should say in terms of direction of generator rotation or direction of motor rotation. MNA gets shifted in this direction. From here, it gets shifted to here. That is, in the same direction of generator rotation, or if you want to say in terms of motor rotation, it is, agar motor is sort of gumre, MNA kiss sort of shift ho gaya, is sort of shift ho gaya. So MNA shifted to opposite direction of the motor rotation, or else MNA shifted to the same direction of the generator rotation. Okay. So armature reaction causes mainly cross magnetizing effect which leads to demagnetizing effect because of the pole saturation and also MNA shift. Shifting of MNA in respect to directions. So what is the problem if MNA gets shifted? Do you have any issue? There is a big issue. What is that? Brushes are positioned along GNA but EMF is zero at this point. Flux is zero means what? EMF is zero. But brush is still here. Now along the brush, there is some EMF induced. So this induced EMF will lead to sparking at the brushes. That is what we'll call it as poor commutation. So this shift of MNA leads to poor commutation. What is poor commutation means? Sparking at the brushes, which means poor commutation, which leads to more maintenance, which leads to damage of commutator segments and brushes, many more things. So how do you avoid this? One way is, don't allow any current to the armature conductor. Because if you create so much current, don't give current to the So if there is current, phi A is zero. If phi A is zero, there is no armature reaction, there is no shifting of MNA, there is no sparking at the brushes, good commutation. But what if current is not flowing in the conductor, what is the use of having a machine? There is no use of having a machine. So there is no way to get rid of this phi A. This will present always. Then how to fix this problem? It's very simple. If you're having a girlfriend, agar aapka girlfriend aapka baat nahi sun rahe, to aap kya karte? Hum hi usko baat sunenge. As simple as that. So just like that, a minute gets shifted. Let's now shift brush also. 
ब्रश को भी शिफ्ट कर देंगे खेल खत्म सो वील शिफ्ट द ब्रश ऑल्सो अलॉन्ग द डायरेक्शन ऑफ जनरेट रोटेशन अलॉन्ग द अपोजिट टू द डायरेक्शन ऑफ मोटर रोटेशन सो देर इज नो स्पार्किंग एट द ब्रश बट इफ यू सी इफ आर्मेचर करंट इज चेंज ए लिटिल यू शुड चेंज द ब्रश ए लिटिल इफ आर्मेचर करंट इज मोर एम एन शिफ्ट इज मोर यू शुड चेंज ब्रश ऑल्सो लिटिल मोर सो एक आदमी को वहां बैठाना पड़ेगा ताकि थोड़ा भी करंट चेंज हो गया थोड़ा ब्रश चेंज करना और थोड़ा करंट चेंज हो गया थोड़ा ब्रश पोजिशन चेंज करना बिकॉज द शिफ्ट ऑफ एम एन ए इज नॉट ऑलवेज कॉन्स्टेंट दैट इज प्रपोर्शनल टू द आर्मेचर करंट दैट इज द फर्स्ट डिसएडवांटेज सेकेंड डिसएडवांटेज If you see, before brush shift, these conductors are having cross. Now, if you shift the brush, I'm shifting the brush. Now, if you notice the current directions here, these are having cross, and now these are having dot. So, what's the big deal? What's the problem? The problem here is, once after shifting the brush. these conductors are also changed to cross and these two conductors are also changed to dot we know this is gna now this is our mna so i positioned brush along the mna i shifted brushes to some theta some angle theta if you notice the armature flux effect how armature flux will affect the main field flux let's see armature flux in all the conductors upper portion of the conductors because these are cross cross means current is going inwards as current is going inwards flux is this way flux is going this way means direction of flux here is in this direction here these are dot so flux is coming out out means here so in this portion flux is in this direction armature flux is this direction here also this direction our main field flux is of this direction armature flux direction because of these conductors is in this direction which means this these conductors are exactly demagnetizing exactly demagnetizing the main field flux what about the other conductors these conductors are as usual like before they were cross magnetizing the armature flux so now we have two effects one is demagnetizing effect because of these conductors and we have cross magnetizing effect because of these conductors so how many number of conductors are responsible for demagnetization if i just go back to the previous slide so theta is a shift of the brush these conductors this region conductors as well as this theta total two theta e conductors are here having demagnetization effect here also two theta e so if you have two poles for a two pole machine total demagnetization angle how much is angle theta plus theta plus theta plus theta for a two pole machine demagnetization is 
फोर थीटा सो फॉर अ टू पोल मशीन डी मैंगेटाइजिंग एफेक्ट इज गिवेन बाय फोर थीटा एंगल और एल्स आई कैन से डी मैंगेटाइजिंग एफेक्ट पर पोल फॉर टू पोल इट इज फोर टीटा ही इफ आई टेक ओनली वन पोल इट विल बी टू टीटा सो हाउ मच इज अ एंगल फॉर वन पोल वन पोल पिच इन वाइंडिंग्स यू मेट सीन वन पोल पिच मीन्स वन एटी डिग्रीज ऑफकोर्स वी टॉक अबाउट ऑल दीज एंगल्स आर इलेक्ट्रिकल एंगल्स दीज ऑल्सो इलेक्ट्रिकल एंगल दीज ऑल्सो इलेक्ट्रिकल एंगल वन पोल पिच मीन्स वन पोल विल हैव वन एटी डिग्रीज एंगल out of this 180 degrees 2 theta e is having demagnetizing effect so remaining angle is how much this is if i take this as one pole region theta e and theta theta e 2 theta e is over for demagnetizing effect so remaining angle is how much 2 theta e minus 180 degrees or 180 degrees minus 2 theta e that is responsible for cross magnetizing per pole now let's see what is our total ampere turns we have a machine so what is the total number of ampere turns it's very clear ampere turns if you have z number of conductors number of conductors are z number of turns is z by 2 if current output of the machine is ia then each conductor is carrying a current of ia by a so we have number of turns z by 2 each conductor is carrying a current of ia by a so total ampere turns is just product of these two that is z ia by 2a this is a total ampere turns armature ampere turns what is a total ampere turns पर पोल एक पोल के लिए कितना है पर पोल मीन सिंपली डिवाइड द एंटायर इक्वेशन विथ नंबर ऑफ पोल्स टोटल एम्पियर टर्न्स बाय पी इज इक्वल टू टोटल एम्पियर टर्न्स पर पोल सो आउट ऑफ दिस मच एम्पियर टर्न्स पर पोल Two theta e will cause demagnetizing ampere, demagnetizing effect. So two theta e means per pole means I said one eighty degrees electrical. If one eighty degrees electrical is having this much ampere turns, then two theta e will be having how much ampere turn? So simply it will be equal to z i a by two a p into two theta e by one eighty degrees, which gives us demagnetizing ampere turns per pole. And we know this much angle will give cross magnetizing effect. cross magnetizing ampere turns per pole so if 180 degrees is having this much 180 minus 2 theta is 
how many ampere turns? So finally we got we can get this cross magnetizing ampere turns per pole by subtracting this demagnetizing from this total. You will get the same. So you can do either way. Depends on your convenience. So the conclusion again here is armature reaction will lead to cross magnetizing effect. This because of this cross magnetizing effect and saturation effect there is a small demagnetization and this cross magnetizing will lead to MNA shift this MNA shift will lead to poor commutation or sparking at brush to avoid this sparking at brush sparking at brush we will shift brush also in the same direction of MNA shift if I shift the brush then again demagnetizing effect will happen this much amount then again remaining thing will be cross magnetizing effect I hope you could recognize the difference between this demagnetization and this demagnetization this is due to the brush shift let's see further we already seen this brush shifting is not practically possible because current flowing through the armature is continuously changing with that continuous change in armature current we cannot keep changing the brush always it is not so advisable as well as not so feasible so to avoid this armature flux effect what else we can do we cannot make this absent but we can nullify this flux because we have phi m plus phi a we cannot let this flux to go zero but what if I can add minus phi a to the same means we have phi a in this fashion if I can have another flux exactly opposite to this then these two gets cancelled and we'll get phi m yes very good idea but how do I get this kind of flux opposite flux and also if this phi a gets changed this minus phi this phi a also should get changed how to get this kind of flux if you see by placing if I have cross conductors here I'll place dot conductors here if I have dot conductors here I'll place cross here which means I will give these two same current I will connect these two this is armature conductors these conductors will call it as compensating winding we connect these two windings in series but in opposite direction if they are cross they will be dot if they are dot they will be cross so in that case I can get this kind of flux then these two get nullified hence now only we left with just phi m so this is the best way to nullify the compensate sorry nullify the armature reaction but the point is where do I place these conductors of course electrically I said from the brushes we take the connection out and we'll give it to this windings that is what the electrical connection but mechanically 
where do we place these conductors? As you can see here, I have positioned these compensating windings in pole shoe. So we don't get a chance to place these conductors. So what we'll do is, you can see, we'll just place this compensating winding in pole shoe. If you see here, as I positioned compensating winding in pole shoe, we don't have any conductors here, compensating conductors here. So compensating winding MMF is approximately of this shape, which you can clearly see it is not exactly nullifying armature MMF. But more or less, it's almost nullifying by a small fraction we left here. But that's not a big problem. I can say approximately these two also get cancelled. So the advantage here compared to the previous one that is a brush shift is in case of brush shift if armature current changes there, there must be one person to shift brush angle also. But if I take, if I use compensating winding, as I'm connecting compensating winding in series with armature current, in series with armature circuit, if armature current changes, obviously compensating winding current also changes. So compensation MMF value also gets changes proportionally. So this is the best way to nullify or neutralize the armature reaction. But the complication here is placing the compensating winding in pole shoe, which is a complex design. So that's why we restrict this method for big machines where you need very fine and where you need good commutation. So there we'll prefer this kind of compensating winding. So let's go to the next technique. to avoid this armature reaction. We have seen one is brush shift. By brush shift, we are not neutralizing, we are not nullifying armature reaction. We are just trying to avoid the sparking at brush by shifting the brush. So this is one method to nullify the armature reaction. Another method is, if you notice here, our resultant MMF is of this nature because of the armature reaction. So what we have seen is, here we have more flux and in this tip we have less flux. So which leads to shifting of the brush. So if I place another pole, I am positioning another pole in interpolar axis. So I call these poles as interpoles. Now how they are connected electrically? How they are going to nullify the armature reaction effect? Now interpoles also are electromagnets. So we have a winding here. So this winding is connected in series to the armature winding. So here Armature flux, sorry, armature current if get changes, armature reaction changes. As armature current is in series with this south pole, the flux given by this south pole also gets changes. So armature effect and the flux here both are proportional. So this south pole will give negative flux as we have seen here. South pole we had taken as negative flux. So this south pole also gives negative flux. I had taken a convention like that. You can take reverse also. You can take completely reverse. That is north pole as negative flux, south pole as positive flux. There is no big difference. It's all about the convention how you are following from starting. So here this south pole flux will try to suppress this 
and this side will place north pole you can see here it's a rotation so we have north pole here which means here also we have a north pole interpole so that will increase the flux value here and this south pole will reduce the flux value here so if you see the resultant flux it's almost close to you know our red one which is a main field flux so now the mna again comes back to this position so which leads to again nullifying the armature reaction if you see if i place instead of placing a south south pole if i place north pole here and if i place south pole here then the flux will be even more peaky even more mna shift more sparking at the brush so you should be careful in designing which pole you require here so this point is also very important if i take generator direction as reference direction of rotation mein aage jo pole hai same pole hona chahiye idhar bhi same sign same polarity hona chahiye or else piche jo pole hai usko opposite hona chahiye this interpole piche kya hai north pole hai so yahan pe kya hona chahiye opposite south pole hona chahiye that is a proper compensating technique or if i take मोटर डायरेक्शन एज रेफरेंस आगे जो पोल है उसको अपोजिट होना चाहिए इंटरपोल और एल्स पीछे जो पोल है सेम पोल होना चाहिए एज ए इंटरपोल सो इट्स ऑल अबाउट विच मिशन यूर कंसिडरिंग वेदर यूर कंसिडरिंग ए मोटर और यूर कंसिडरिंग ए जनरेटर सो आई रिकमेंड यू टू फ्रीज दिस पिक्चर नॉट दिस पिक्चर yeah try to remember this picture if you have this picture in your mind then here we have more flux so to suppress this more flux i need to have a south pole so we place south pole so try to freeze this picture in your mind along with these directions generator is taraf motor taraf is taraf so try to remember this picture along with these generator directions and the shape so automatically things will get clear so that is all about armature reaction and their effects and how to compensate these armature reaction effects so let's summarize the whole lecture what we have seen so far little long which i have made so to summarize this we have seen armature reaction what is armature reaction effect of main field flux sorry effect of armature flux on to the main field flux now if you notice we will see these armature reaction only in case of dc machine as well as synchronous machine we don't see these in other machines like if you see induction motor or induction machine we don't see armature reaction there we don't see in transformers also so why we don't see in those cases why we see in case of only dc and synchronous machines because in synchronous machines as well as dc machine we have two separate windings one is called field winding another one is called armature winding but in case of induction machine there is nothing called field winding armature winding itself will act as a field winding as well as armature winding so in case of dc and synchronous we have these two separated hence one will affect another armature winding will affect the main field flux it will react to the main field flux so how it is reacting that's what we'll call it as armature reaction in case of transformer there is no question of armature as well as field because everything is one unit only but there also secondary winding has a effect on secondary winding flux has an effect on primary winding flux that's all different story which we'll see in transformer case to avoid this armature reaction in case of dc machine we go for either compensating winding or interpoles we use interpoles Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to our channel for more updates by clicking below link. Thank you.